tour of the, uh, the Barton estate with all the, uh, the fauna, the unusual growth. First of all, you got to take a look at this leaf. Look at this leaf. I have very big hands, but reminds you of a tobacco leaf. And here's like a little cigar to go along with it. This is called a talpin tree. Now these things live to be about 65 years old. This guy is probably at the end of his lifespan. It's called the tree that keeps on giving because in the spring it has a beautiful white flower. Then we get the leaves and then we get these cigar things and then the leaves turn brown and they start falling off through the fall and then these things turn brown, these little seed pods. They start falling off through the fall and the winter. And you just got to keep sweeping up after it. It's kind of like a, a pet animal or something like that. That's the catalpa tree. If you look up here, you can see this thing there. The squirrels and the uh, woody woodpecker love it up there. They got all the tree, all sorts of terrible things going on. But it's a beautiful tree. Very popular back in the day. Called the Indian cigar tree. Bobby tree. Plant seed. Alright. Well, let me show you some of the other exotic plants and animals we have around the house. You appear to have another one over there as well. Yes. That one's been struck by lightning many times. We call it lightning rod. Well, over here we have something that's very exotic and very rare. That, of course, the catalpa is a deciduous tree. It drops all its leaves in order to conserve winter, as in, to conserve water during the winter when, when you don't get a lot of water. But this very rare species, not only is it a beautiful accent to any home or garden, it's, uh, it's actually an evergreen tree but it's called the dying evergreen tree. It's like a possum, it feigns death in the fall, and then it comes back to life like its brother or sister over here during the uh, spring. And then next year what will happen is they'll change places. This will be all green, and this one will pretend that it's dying. But enough said of that have to come back here and see the other other plants we have. Now over here you have the beautiful holly tree. And as you can see, the nice thing about this tree, I think it's Dioecious, uh, which means that if it's a male it needs a female, if it's a female it needs a male. And as you can see we only have roses here. And in other words, it's a celibate tree and it doesn't reproduce itself so far. We haven't allowed that yet. We're thinking about breeding it. We have a neighbor down the road and we're, we're kind of negotiating that. But as you can see, it's beautiful form. There's hundreds of these species throughout. They grow in all 50 states, but they're very sharp and spindly and they never give off the leaves. You never have to rake up after them. You never have to do anything with them. You stick them in a corner, you never think about them again. Now over here, this is an amazing tree. This is only maybe 15, at the most 20 years old. My mother planted this a year or two after. Well, actually, I planted it, but she bought it for me to plant. As you can see, it's called a tulip tree. In the spring, it actually grows tulips. No tulips all throughout the, the leaves. It's very quickly, it grows so quick, it's amazing. It's kind of like the guitar, but that grows grows very quickly too. And the catalpa, they use the wood, it's so hard, they use it for railroad ties, which the Long Island Railroad, they just love that tree. But this, if you come over and look at this, I don't know if I can show you. But, you find a strong, strange formation on this tree. I don't know if you can see a ring on this. Maybe I'll just pull one off. Here's a better example. Where it used to have a, uh, a tulip, now in the fall, it grows a little pod. 
So, as you can see, it's kind of like the catalpa in the, in the sense that it's a pain in the neck. It just keeps on throwing things off all season long. And it's a seed pod, you know. We'll throw more of these than this. But notice, the trunk, after only not even 20 years, is about, I'd say at least 40 inches in circumference. Uh, at least. I don't know what the diameter or radius is. But what's amazing now is we also have a fig tree. And this fig tree we have been trying to kill for years. And it started growing over where the holly tree is. And then we just totally, I hate to say it, but ignored it. You know, left it out in the freezing cold, did nothing to it. So it picked up and it moved to a sunnier place all by itself. I don't know how it did it. It took about three or four years. Nobody was looking, and uh, nobody saw it actually do it, but it did. This year it decided to really, I guess, give us a, a raison d'etre, whatever they say in French, a reason for being. So it decided it was going to create a lot of fruit. Uh, I don't know if you could move in here, but each one of these branches, each one of them, has about a dozen of these little what they call figs. Uh, each one. It doesn't matter where you look. It's almost like the when you look out into the universe. It's isotropic. It's the same everywhere. Well, if you look at each one of these branches, they're almost identical. They're laden with fruit. I mean, if you lived in, I don't know, Jerusalem or one of those biblical lands, this would be like the land of milk and honey. Fruit and honey or whatever. But it's a beautiful tree. Of course, nobody likes figs, and we don't eat them. But hopefully, by, I guess, the end of September, these will be nice and big and red and juicy fruit. And uh, each one of these branches, if you go down to Warbaums, they sell them like a dozen of these things for 11 or $12. So each one of these branches, theoretically, is probably worth 12 bucks. And there's at least a hundred of them. So that maybe next year we'll start to farm this thing. We'll have to see. And if last, we can't kill it by then. If we can't kill it off. The last thing I suppose we have to look at the old dogwood tree. Ah, uh, uh, it's a Long Island staple. Yes, it's a white dogwood. You can't tell right now. But if you come back in the spring, you'll see it. And it's a beautiful tree. There's no question about it. Roma loves to climb up there and pretend he's a squirrel. And basically, as far as the, what you might call trees, and I haven't gotten into the shrubbery and the bushes and the plants and the hedges and things of that nature, but as far as the trees go, that's pretty much a wrap of a large state here on Long Island. And um, you see that other catapult tree in the background, lightning rod. And, uh, He's still got his fingers stretched up to the sky waiting for the next electrical storm. Well, you all come back now, you hear? Well, thank you very much, John, for that lovely tour. You're very welcome. Here's a little uh, tulip tree pod for a souvenir. Thanks. You're Maybe we could publish this on PBS. I don't know. I think it might be perfect for them. After all, that is their forte. If you're making up stuff as you go along. As I said, for PBS, that is their forte. Yeah, but that is kind of like science fiction.